Hi, Jeff. Hi, how are you doing? I'm not bad. How are, how are things? Doing really well, really busy. Um, over the uh, hafnium bump and yes. uh, moving to more important things for, well, not that hafnium isn't important, but. Well, now we can start thinking about what we should do about identity. And uh, I wanted yep. to talk to you uh, about how do you make a decision between Azure AD Connect and Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync? Uh, and for those that don't know, just to get an idea of, of what is that new Cloud Sync technology, uh, and and then it, once we've made the choice between it, you know, really sort of explore where its valuable use cases are and where you might want to consider it uh, to be something for maybe a little bit later. So. Starting with the first one, uh, what what is as you already connect Cloud Sync, uh, and well, is it new? Is it something I should be looking at today? Sure. So uh, Azure AD Connect first has been around for a long, long time. It's a very mature product. Uh, Microsoft realizes that uh, your journey to the cloud is unfortunate to have it start with installing more software on prem. So yeah. they uh, have put a lot of emphasis and in investments into uh, creating a cloud service that can perform the same features as AAD Connect on-prem in the cloud, doesn't require a, a heavy uh, software installation. So uh, it's a Rev1, it, it has generally, it's become generally available, so it's hit yeah. GA. Uh, we should see a lot more investment in it, and it'll uh, improve in its uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, for now, it does the basics. It, it does uh, synchronize user objects to the cloud uh, so that uh, you have those objects in the cloud and you can apply security principles to them, add them to groups, et cetera. You still will be using your AD on-prem as your source of authority, yeah. the accounts that uh, if you provision new accounts or manage accounts, it's still going to be in AD on-prem, but the service then synchronizes those changes with the cloud in Azure Active Directory. Uh, there are some limitations to the current version. Um, most of my customers are working with Exchange. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Cloud Sync does not work with Exchange. Uh, so it's, it's a very limited use for my customers. Uh, so. Yeah. So when we say exchange, do we mean yeah, we're exchange, talking about exchange hybrid or is that what what scenarios aren't supported with it? Because I know it syncs attributes for mail enabled users, right? But it, right. I couldn't use it to yeah to form the basis right. of a hybrid migration or an ongoing sync for hybrid after I've moved mailboxes. Is that right? right. Correct. Okay. You couldn't use it for, for either one. If it's hybrid, you have yeah. Exchange on-prem, you are either migrating to the cloud in the yeah. process of it or getting ready to, or uh, you have already completed your migration to the cloud. Yeah. At this time, you're still required to have an Exchange server on-prem to manage yeah. those AD attributes that are mail related. And those do not sync with Azure AD Connect. So uh, if you are a hybrid customer, so they, either in the process or yeah. have already completed uh, Azure AD Connect sync, Cloud Sync is not a solution for you. Okay, so, so that limits it slightly. But of course, if you're still running a hybrid server, you're gonna run on-premises infrastructure. And even if you are a multi-forest hybrid server, then right. that's only one Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. And those are usually quite complex environments where being able to connect over the network between different forests isn't necessarily a big problem, really, is it? And you would want to be on a tried and tested footing for that. Now, the one thing that right. popped into my mind when yes. I first saw this uh, was... I've seen customers where it's quite, it's been beneficial when they've had something like Okta. And I, I, I'm not a fan. Not that there's anything wrong with Okta in particular, uh, but it's quite, when they've got maybe eight, ten forests, they're not connected together, and they want to go all to one tenant, then it's it's sometimes quite 
fortuitous that they have a solution like Okta that can synchronize all of those disconnected forests into one Azure AD. Uh, th does that strike you as where this should be going? Or uh, is that the wrong sort of use case for it? Uh, as long as exchange is not in the mix there, which is uh, <laughs> in likely. my world is, is not likely. I, I mean, it's more than likely exchange is going to be in there. Uh, then yes, it would be. Uh, it might be a, an appropriate solution. Yeah. Um, I wrote an article for Quest that, you know, kind of goes through the details of what's supported, what's not, and uh, you know, you should probably take a look at that. See if uh, you have any stoppers that would prevent you from doing AD Cloud Sync. Yeah. Uh, but if you're able to use it and it fits your scenario, I would go with that over. Active Directory connect the, the normal method because we're going to see a lot more investment made in the Cloud Sync product. Yeah. Um, and uh, if it fits the bill, it's one less uh, piece of software on, that's running on your infrastructure. Yeah, and the Ross. That's scenarios. usually most people's goal is to minimize that footprint. Yes, and there are yeah. scenarios where people do start with Microsoft 365, and they've got to get up and running quite quickly. And email isn't the thing that's going to happen first. They're going to come back to that later on. Uh, so, the, I mean, do you remember when Exchange Multi-Forest Hybrid came out? That was some time after Azure AD Connect or Azure AD Sync supported the Multi-Forest Hybrid model as well. That had to become GA. Then further down the line, Exchange supported it. So I, I looked at it as disappointing, but... yeah. It's, it's it's different teams in Microsoft that have to finish one product yeah. before the next thing gets validated as well. So some good scenarios there. And as you say, on Protocol right. 365, we've got uh, a good set of different scenarios. These are the supported things and reasons to do it in the, the, these kind of scenarios uh, and what's supported and what's not and what you should do first. Yeah. So, so do you think you're going to be putting Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync into any production customer uh, environments in the next six months? So as a consultant who works with Exchange uh, <laughs> heavily uh, and, and the fact that it is not supported in Cloud Sync right now, uh, yep. no, I don't, I don't anticipate it. No. Uh, there are, uh, when we asked the team who's writing it when they might support uh, exchange. They uh, said it, they, it's on their roadmap. Yeah, which so, means it's not in the near term. You know, we it may be quite a while. So, so the, the the key thing is finding those appropriate use cases. Try it out in the labs. Get to understand how it works now. Yeah, and then when it's ready for exchange environments, which is a lot of environments, you'll be be good to go. Because fundamentally, yes. using it, setting it up, understanding how the agents works, creating rules for it, this is all different to the way right. we're really, really used to. So when it's ready, you'll probably find that that's going to open the door to some new opportunities, though. Yeah, yeah. And there are some other things that it doesn't support. If your uh, organization's invested in Windows Hello, yeah. it doesn't support that. It doesn't do uh, hybrid AD join. Uh, so there's... There's some significant things that enterprise That's a massive use. gap. Yeah, That's, yeah. That is massive. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely one for the lab for the moment, isn't it? it you know, that right. is, that, yeah. uh, arguably that's a that's as big a gap as, as Exchange Hybrid. Yeah. All right. That, that was really interesting and enlightening. And uh, for the full article, check out practical365.com. Thanks for joining me, Jeff. It's always great to speak yeah, to you. Absolutely. Nice to see you. Take care.